Hi, I'm Dr. Les Feinberg. I'm the founder of Neuromodulation Technique, the Feinberg Method, and developer of NMT Seminars. The following video is an amazing one, one that uh, may never have been filmed before. This is the real-time cure of a young woman with anaphylactic allergy uh, to a variety of foods. This video was shot on May 1st, 2009 at the Boucher Institute of Naturopathic Medicine in Vancouver, BC, where I was teaching a level one NMT seminar. This is at the end of the first day of the seminar. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock. We've been going for about 13 hours. And this is the last patient of the day, a young woman named Ed, who's had uh, severe anaphylactic allergies to fish, shellfish, and chicken since she was two years old. And what you'll see here is the NMT protocol uh, performed from start to finish. In this uh, system of treatment, neuromodulation technique, uh, we take the position that disease has an informational basis. That is, in this particular case, uh, the immune system was inappropriately being triggered to react in a very violent way to exposure to chicken, fish, or shellfish. Uh, what we did is apply the NMT protocol, a system for evaluating and then correcting that informational basis of this uh, condition. So as we go through the treatment protocol, what you'll see is uh, my posing questions uh, to the woman's body, getting answers directly by way of muscle testing uh, that reflect the organization of her nervous system at a subconscious level uh, at which the immune system is, is regulated. The video has been divided into seven sections, one through seven, and uh, we hope you'll have a chance to look at all of these and uh, see something that uh, you've probably never seen before, the real-time cure of anaphylaxis to foods. Please join us at www.nmt.md for more information about neuromodulation technique, training, uh, treatment, and educational services. So we're here with uh, Amelia, we'll call her uh, Ed for short. And um, it's okay with you if we use this video for instruction yeah. purposes. Thank you. And we're going to be treating uh, for an issue of anaphylaxis to fish. And uh, I noticed some of your fish have feathers though. Oh yeah, I also have a chicken allergy too. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Ever since I but the fish since birth. The fish since birth, and that's the most important. I actually, and it's been so long since I've been a chicken that I didn't even know that. And that was since age six, you said. Okay. So, um, what has happened previously in your exposures to fish? Um, so it's actually a swelling of the throat, and the mouth, and, and, and lips, but it's the swelling of the throat that's the main concern for these patients. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, how severe was the last? When was the last exposure that you had, and how severe was those symptoms, and what was required to resolve them? The last exposure was approximately uh, it was Father's Day last year, and um, it was I don't know what the fish was because it varies from species to species, but uh, but I had experienced swelling of the lips and and also of the kind of jaw area, um, and. Uh, I ended up going to the hospital just as a precaution, <laughs> and they gave me um, many different kinds of things and tried, and, uh, and it took probably um, it took like a week for it to go away completely. Um, but that's because there were other issues with my face on skin. Super Uh, you have to describe that more. Oh, yeah, I don't know what you mean. Um, and then it actually went away um, after uh, significantly reduced after the, uh, the first uh, the first uh, medication that I used to be. Um, 
um, but it still kind of lingered around. In what time period was it produced? Um, roughly, it was, I can't quite remember. Roughly. Say an hour, two hours. But it, yeah, it didn't go away for seven, completely for seven, seven days. All right. Okay. And is that what you were talking about just a minute ago when you said the skin had to recover? Um, yeah. Or were you talking about something different? I think I was that? talking about a different. Uh, so what was that other thing you were talking about? It was, about? Um, I, think, I think one of those, it was actually another allergic reaction. It was just to clams, um, but, uh, so but, shellfish and? I can have uh, prawns, but I can't have clams. So it, well, you're just lucky it's not the other one, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but again, my, my lips swelled, um, uh, and then uh, and my skin, like, had to stretch with it, so when the swelling went down... Oh, it, it was damaged by the yeah. stretching. Um, <clears throat> so did you require medication after you went to the hospital? Um, for the fish exposure last year? Yeah, uh, I did what the doctor told me to, which was to take uh, two antibiotics a day. Okay. So, how long did it take for your symptoms to onset last year when you were exposed to the fish? Um, probably, like I, the swelling started like within minutes. How many minutes? Five minutes? I don't know. Ten, maybe? Less than that. Less than ten, like, okay. Less than ten minutes. Um, okay. Tops. Um, and, uh, and it continued to swell for half an hour until I actually got to it. Okay. But I, um, at the same time, I took an antihistamine immediately, um, so that slowed the, the swelling. I'm very good telling stories, obviously. Well, I'm taking this story real seriously, as you can tell. So, um, okay. So what were the circumstances? You wouldn't be like to eat fish. Why, how was it that you were exposed to fish? How much fish did you eat? Not very much because I took my dad out of the state and went uh-huh. to um, the banana leaf the great restaurant. And I told him that I had an allergy and that they should avoid letting the cross-contamination. And they were like, okay, you can work on that. And, uh, well, so they decided to go for the direct contamination. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was just like a kitchen accident. It must have been like something transferred with the sauce or... You know, oh, I see. So there, were, there weren't like pieces of fish. There were pieces of fish in it. It was, uh, it was like a uh, remnant of something else. Do you know that it was actually fish as opposed to something else that you might have uh, I don't know. There, to there, there were prawns in the sauce, but I've had prawns since. Like, the, the only thing... Like it was either fish or chicken. Oh, so so you know that prawns were in the sauce. Yeah. What, what, what was it? What was the order? It was a, it was a, um, it was a curry. Thing. Okay. But um, someone else would also order the shellfish, so it could be. So sometimes yeah. some of those anchovy paste or some of those curries have anchovy paste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or oyster sauce right. in too. Yeah. yeah. It would be. Or fish sauce. Or fish sauce. Fish sauce. <laughs> That's the major thing that I think of. Good point. Good point. So uh, <laughs> then, what about the uh, what about the uh, chicken? What was your? Do you remember what the last uh, allergy exposure was like? Um, well, it would probably been like sixteen, and I had uh, lots of and it had chicken broth, which I didn't think of. Or that I asked afterwards, um, and again, it was, it was Pit Brook, you wouldn't know that about matzo ball no. soup, would you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the, uh, uh, but yeah, so again, it was, it was swelling of the song palette, and I had trouble talking. Okay. All right. Uh, so you realize that after I treat you, that what we'd like to do is a test exposure, mm-hmm. and that it would be a incremental test exposure. We start out by looking at what it is, by then smelling what it is, by doing a drug test on the lip, and uh, we might suggest that perhaps even on the tongue. I, I wouldn't have you actually eat anything tonight, but certainly that would be enough to provoke a response, would it not? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you also realize that you could have a reaction. You might have to go to the hospital. Is that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, I got my uh, everything. 
you have the, you have your empty <laughs> pen and you're prepared to use that if you need to yes. use that. Okay. And what is your age? Uh, my age is 24. Okay. You know, to me, anybody under 50 looks like 15, so I got I just want to make sure that you're of legal, yeah. legal age. <laughs> Allowed to do that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Are there any other things that I should be aware of? No, I think that's, that's mostly it. I don't have any drug allergies, no medical allergies to my knowledge. That hasn't happened. But that's still like the main thing to say general respiratory reaction. Is this a. Uh, what triggers your asthma? Um, it's largely gone. I used to have it as a teenager, but it was um, illness and uh, exercise. And now I can work like uh, exercise and just kind of generally cease when I was like 18. So you've done some muscle testing before, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's do this. Let's have you. Uh, do you ever cook? Uh, rarely, I cook. Okay, but uh, just imagine you're lifting a medium-sized chicken. Oh. That's the amount of effort that you're going to use. I've never done that. I would have no idea. Okay. Uh, she doesn't know what chicken. Are you like cantaloupe? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. So medium-sized cantaloupe. Okay. All right. But you have to lift it that way. Like, just imagine you're like Michael Jordan. Okay, I'm about to down. Like lift the ball. Like. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and we'll check present time space uh, coherence. 100% present time, 100% present space. And any inappropriate exclusions or inclusions to the OHI, there are regarding relationship to illness, any mind body memory of historical or virtual trauma, conflict, stress, or injustice that contributes to the illness behavior. Uh, is there any history of any kind of abuse in your life? Um. And that's it. But uh, I guess just going through the um, through these anaphylactic allergy episodes of the trauma in itself, isn't it? A little bit. It's more the brain, And then relationship to internal universe and peace of mind and acceptance in regard to eventuality of aging, degeneration, and death. So we're just going through the CPQQ statements, and she's fine on those. And uh, you know, usually we have a bigger screen, but you can—I think you're close enough you can see at least uh, to know where we're at. Hopefully, I'll give you enough verbal information that you'll be able to follow up fairly well. Um, there are information that falls compromising awareness of the condition, and there are information falls contributing to physiology or perception of symptoms. So we're going to make a scan for these uh, issues. And here, and we'll make a correction for these information faults. This is basically step six on the GEF that we did earlier. So let's have you just turn within the chair so that I can get to your back and take it right in. Breath out. And pants. Uh, yeah, you can scoot like that, or, or yeah, it, it's fine. It, it, however, you're comfortable doing it. Okay. And uh, no blocked healing issues, so we're going to go directly to subject matter. And uh, the first pathway is uh, immunological allergy pathway. So, first thing that we'll uh, do is look at information faults, compromising awareness of allergy triggers, and I think we'll put in a transform from to state um, in the way that I showed you before.
And so, Transform, to, transform from state includes anaphylaxis to uh, fish, shellfish, chicken. Uh, anything else? Anything else you want to specify? Fish, shellfish, and chicken. That's pretty much it, right? Okay. And then. Yeah. Transform to state includes. Perfect neuroimmune acceptance of um, fish, shellfish, chicken. Anaphylaxis is not allowed. Well, in terms of what we were talking about earlier, that's that's an actual consideration. I mean, it's simply not allowed in the transformation that we're specifying. We're specifying a set of rules that the universe will reconfigure to, and, and that's not allowed. It's simply, and that's a serious thing. It's not kidding around. It's just it's not permitted. And so, uh, we're going to look at uh, information faults uh, around these, uh, these issues. So we're just looking at information with faults around the transform from and to state. Pulse these in. How long were you when you first ate fish? Uh, more than two. So, did they have to rush you to the hospital? Does anyone remember if you had a reaction the first time you ate fish? That's interesting because you're supposed to have, you know, classically you're supposed to have some previous exposure that allows you to be sensitized before you. Some people think that in utero exposures. Does your mom like fish? Yes, because her father She likes it because her father can. It's a treat, you know. Did I hear something interesting there? Is that is that significant? Well, it's more like. I don't know, all of a sudden I get more information faults. <laughs> now, let's have you turn, take breath. That's why I was thinking you might want to just kind of permanently turn sideways. Oh, okay. So that, yeah, then you can, yeah. Take a breath. Breath out. back. Yep. So let's go back 
and just look very carefully at this. Sixty is what I get now. I'm not going to record that. I'll just leave these numbers there. Sixty is what I get there. So and then forty here and. Uh, Okay, but as I said, I don't want to destroy those initial numbers, so I'll leave those. So that's good. I like that. And now we're going to look at um, identifying this. So in this situation, I'll be general and I'll be specific. So we're going to look at um, total system burden with regard to inhalant allergens. With regard to ingestants, uh, with regard to contactants, 380. Do you ever react to toiletries or soaps or laundry products or anything like that? Um, I'm not sure. I do have. Do you have any rash stuff that happens? You overwash. Uh, you know you're not supposed to use steel wool <laughs> because it leaves those those red rings in the bathtub. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So injectants. We might look at and animal products. Yeah. And fish is positive total system burden a thousand. You do all right with eggs? Yeah, it's fine. It's only after they hatch that it's a problem. Five forty on chicken, and then um. So I'm just going to be oh shellfish. That test of a thousand too. Necessarily every shellfish. All right. So let's go ahead and close that, and we're going to treat to make all of the DSS fully aware of these allergens. Now we're going to look at information folds that uh, contribute to allergy. Autoimmune behavior, specifically the anaphylaxis. So, think about the most recent uh, 
and a full access to you experience. Think about the scariest one. That must have been scary when you were a little kid. I remember. I remember running to the bathroom and watching my face turn blue. I don't know. Right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Any information falls associated with that history, with that event, with that experience? Are there not? Were there? Are there now? I like that. That's good. So, uh, next we go to the uh, scanning and awareness statements. The inappropriate tagging of correlation of meaning to afferent stimuli associated with these exposures. We'll look at it, uh, awareness, creating awareness of distinction between self and substance who rest and recognizes uh, allergens or self substance and subject to other points. We look at uh, all commingled data in any data processing site, confusing distinction between self and allergen. Um, we'll look at any excess deficient or blocked energy, morphological faults, or PMPs. Meridian points requiring sedation or purification involving any energetic structure in the mind body, including all these meridians, uh, fields, bodies, violins. Any inappropriate facilitation or data path origin target combinations, white matter data transmission or template data processing, any information processing level contributing the reference path to this knowledge involving the following structures of CNS, the tongue of the nervous system, or neuroimmune cell memory. Sammy, turn, take a breath. Giving an indication that uh, that's all we need to do. So uh, let's let's just do a little bit of test exposure stuff. So uh, oh, excellent! Grab your own silverware. Nice preparation. So. Um, is any level of the ACS aware of information faults in regard to this uh, setting, the contemplation of exposure to these foods? Are there none? There are? There aren't. Um, good. So, and you've seen them. Are, is there any, are there information faults related to, the, to seeing these foods? 
to your history with these foods, to your future with these foods? Are there none? Are there information faults compromising the validity of this response? Are there none? So, you know, when you, when you got a lot, when you have a pretty serious situation, you err on the side of being very careful about all the things that you check. And let's have you just take a smell of this. So you can't smell something without taking some of those molecules in, maybe not enough, usually not enough, to approach a threshold uh, that will trigger anaphylaxis. But I had a patient, he's a chiropractor, he's, I don't know, late 40s, something like that, <coughs> in um, Las Vegas a few years ago. And uh, so uh, he was so anaphylactic to shrimp that his, his last exposure to shrimp before I treated him was that uh, he was at uh, Benny Hanna, the restaurant, you know, where they do the preparation of the food at the table or the wok, you know, the steam and everything. So no, he and his buddy were at one table, and then they had these tables kind of close. And uh, so the people in the next table ordered shrimp, you know, and they're stir-frying it, and the steam's wafting up. And that was all it took, and they had to rush him to the hospital for that. So we treated him. Uh, it was a uh, it was a comprehensive seminar. We just treated him with the allergy pathway, and then um, we went through the same testing. And uh, his his response was was really violent. I mean, previously it was just bam. And so we got done. We went through the testing. We went through the rub test, and everything looked okay. So we had a plate of like, six shrimp. So it turns out it liked shrimp because he ate all six of them. And so, uh, you know, about every 40 minutes or so, I turn to him and I say, Bill, how you doing? He goes, it must be pretty good. I'd be dead by now. <laughs> Great. Glad to hear that. Um, so that was mackerel. And is any level of the ACS aware of information faults in regard to this exposure? Is any level of the ACS aware of the possibility of uh, anaphylaxis or adverse neuroimmune response to the substance, is there not? And now let's try the chicken. <laughs> it smells like cat food. Yeah, it really does, actually. <laughs> so, is any level of the ACS aware of information faults associated with this exposure? Is any level of the ACS aware of this substance uh, capable of triggering an adverse neuroimmune response or anaphylaxis? Is there not? And finally, salmon. <clears throat> oh, you know, when we buy it in the States, it just says wild pink salmon, but here it says salmon rosé sauvage. <laughs> I, it's so, I just love it. I want to I wanna buy all my salmon up here. So are there information faults associated with this exposure? Are there not? There are. So let's have you just keep sniffing that one. This was the worst one mm -hmm. by report. You know, I'm going to do something I've not done before just for fun. So anything I bring to mind, I can share with the patient, right? <laughs> well, you could have, we could have met each other halfway. <laughs> so, now, are there information faults related to this exposure? Straight on, big fist. Are there not?
any adverse response to this? Are there information? There are information calls now. I'm communicating a lot more information, I suspect. A lot more. Are you using yourself as a surrogate for her? So, you may think, that's absolutely safe. So I'm going to tell you a story that happened this last year in our office. So our office is kind of a small office. And Herb Smith, who practices with me, has a treatment room across the hall, so it's six feet away. And so, you know, we kind of hear back and forth. And um, so, and there are information faults associated with the macro. Which I, it's all right. I don't like it as well as Mary. That's why I come along with the Dutch so well. Okay, <clears throat> so now are there information faults associated with this, this, or this? So, I just finished treating something in my office, and I hear Dr. Smith's door open, and uh, I hear the, his voice say, uh, say, would somebody bring a glass of water? I thought, why? You know, he's going to be a lazy son of a gun in his old age. He won't even get himself a glass of water. I didn't really think that. I figured there was something going on with the patient, but... Uh, I didn't pay much attention to it until about two minutes later I hear this door open again and he says say is that water coming and so now that was too much so I opened my door and he's standing there in the hallway and I said because he was there with the patient in the next room so he comes into the room and he says Jesus, I, tell you, I just started working with this new patient she's anaphylactic to a number of foods and no exposure we don't even have any we don't even have any actual substances in the office And he says, I was just going through the list of possible allergens and got to the thing, I don't, I don't remember what it was uh, at the moment. And uh, as, as I concepted that, that was enough. That was enough. Hey, you know, at the bottom of the line, you know, it's fish, but, you know, by the time it reaches your brain, it's not fish, it's meaning and significance. So the reference, the conceptual reference was enough to trigger this reaction. So the woman was, you know, her throat was swelling and she was, so I said, well, just stay here. So I hadn't even seen her. I didn't know what her name was. I just, that's all I knew is what I just told him. So I started treating information faults related to this rea reaction. I said, okay, I think that's it. Why don't you go back? So go back, his door opens and I hear her say, what did you do? What did you do? You know, just like that, just that same tone. And uh, he says, "Well, you know, Dr. Feinberg could treat us information faults." And she goes, "Oh, well, it just completely, it just, it just completely went away. All the itchiness and the swelling and tightness just went away." So, be aware of that. I mean, it gives you a whole different sense of really what you're dealing with. It's, it's not about stuff. It's about information. It's really what it's about. So now. Are there information faults associated with this, this, or this? Um, no information faults associated with that. information faults associated with that. But you know what? I wouldn't buy that chicken again. Well, I'm telling you, I think it tastes like that food too. Well, you're going to ask me how I knew it tastes like that? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the salmon I like. Okay. Let's go to the next step. And here's what the next step is. We have a clean napkin. Paper towel. Oh, huh. I don't know if it's really strong enough, but it's pretty good. Wow. 
Maybe in Premix is a lot tougher. That's special. For special, special Premix? Yeah, seventh generation. Seventh generation? Yeah, the last seven generations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an organic. That's organic. disgusting. Look at that. What's that? Four splashes before you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was the, the next question is, what generation are we on right now? <laughs> all right. So the next test that I'd like to do is a rub test. That's all right with you. And uh, so we're going to rub this all over your hair. No, <laughs> we're going to rub this on your lip because we'll rub it all over my digital tablet. We'll rub this all over your, over your lip and we'll do that pretty aggressively, and the idea is, and this is kind of like a subcutaneous test, we're actually going to be driving some you know, molecules and fibers past, there are only two or three layers of cells on your lip, it's very thin, and uh, so, let me just go ahead and do that, just tighten your lip across your lower teeth, okay? You're only going to get one generation out of this one. <laughs> and then, are there information faults associated with this exposure? Are there further information faults associated with this exposure? Are there not? And are there information faults associated with this exposure? Are there not? Washing your face with fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good before kissing. How long do you have to wash your face with fish before it's clean? <laughs> How many fish does it take to clean a face? <laughs> Obviously, it depends on the type of fish. <laughs> so, no, you're fine. So, messy, but otherwise fine. So, are there information faults associated with these exposures? Are there not? Will any of these exposures, as ingestants, create an anaphylactic response? Will they not? Will they create any allergy response whatsoever? Will they not? So, let's just wait a minute, relax, and see if you notice any tingling or redness or irritation. I've rubbed the heck out of your lower lip. So, <laughs> so uh, I, mean, I had to put you in a headlock just to hold your head still. But there's some, there's some abrasion, but uh, but I think you can tell the difference between the abrasion and you know the anaphylactic response. So we'll just hold on here. I might just go back right now to the pathway and ask with regard to fish, chicken, shellfish: Is total system burden of these allergies log five hundred four three two one ninety eighty seventy sixty fifty forty thirty twenty log twenty? Uh, it's just getting better and better, uh, at least according to the testing. Are you noticing anything? No. I don't. I don't see any redness or anything like. That. Yes, I have the abrasion. <laughs> <laughs> you hear? You know, I'm never going to get over that. You hear about this abrasion for 
Oh yeah, Dr. Feinberg, he abraded me. <laughs> yeah, he fixed the allergy, but he abraded the crap out of my lip. <laughs> I had to go to it. to be treated for that though. She's got the rest of my life without being abraded. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love Vancouver. My mom grew up here, so we used to come up when I was a kid. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I can't figure out why I never moved here. Oh well. <laughs> nice weather today. Huh? Yeah. Well. That's it. I think that's it. Oh yeah, then I wind up living in a desert. So there you go. Huh. It's good. Thanks. I feel better. So are you noticing anything at all? No, it's actually so would you expect that that degree of exposure would have done something? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So should we go for just a small amount? Okay. And, and I think what I'd have you do, actually. The salmon on the fork is more than what I do right now. Yeah. So I think <laughs> well, I, I think though, what I'd like you to do is give you just a, a little bit. Should we start with the chicken and work our way up to okay. through species? To, through species, yeah. You know, so we'll taxonomic progression. Okay. So I think what I'd like you to do is is just go ahead and uh, kind of chew that up. Don't swallow any of it and spit all of it into this. Because again, uh, you know, I don't want to sit up with you in the ER if you have a problem. And okay. So, no, okay. 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 Yeah, you should upgrade their chow. Um, Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have you hold right there and resist. And uh, are there information faults associated with exposure? Any adverse influence at all from this exposure? Is there not? Ready for the next exposure? And uh, we'll... I, you know, I forgot all my Darwinian stuff. I don't remember if we're going up or down the scale now. But, uh, so, some mackerel for you. Almost like the little kids. Right, here comes the airplane. <laughs> So, are there information faults associated with this exposure? Um, are there not? Is there any adverse reaction that uh, may occur as a result of this exposure? Is there not? Are there information faults compromising validity of this response? Is there not? <laughs> salmon. Okay. Self inflicted salmon. <laughs> Here's 
You're not going to eat the rest of this, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Are there information faults associated with this? So we had a fellow who came to the um, last seminar that we did. Actually, we had two anaphylactic patients come to the last seminar that we did at, in, in Portland. And one of them was a patient of a um, recently graduated chiropractor from a chiropractic college, uh, a young guy. Real, uh, real kind of, you know, uptight kind of kind of guy. You know, just tell his body just... Yeah, I'm relaxed. What? <laughs> what? What? And uh, so, you know, he was just a very uptight guy. And uh, he was allergic to all peanuts, all legumes of any type. And he was so allergic to peanuts that he, if he was on an airplane where they serve peanuts and the person in the seat behind him, unbeknownst to him, was eating peanuts, he would have a reaction. So he didn't want to try peanuts, but... We went through everything else with him, and he had fresh soybeans that he normally react to, and um, kidney beans and stuff like that, and some garbanzo beans. Um, and he had a bag of peanuts, but we didn't want to eat them. And so, you know, I went through treatment with him, and we went through a bunch of stuff. And then I ate a bunch of peanuts, and then I lean over and I, you know, talk kind of loud to him and breathy, you know. And, no reaction at all. And, I mean, a little revulsion, but aside from the no, no neuroimmune response, you know? And um, so, um, and then he ate some of the uh, fresh soybeans, you know, and um, we'd go through that, and uh, he'd uh, have like a little tingling, and we'd check information faults and correct those, and then they go away. And, have him try something else. So, so we got through it, and uh, actually eating a bunch of stuff, and so he's having a little itchiness, and again, we treat inflammation bolts, and finally, after about 15 minutes of kind of chasing symptoms around, well, there's no symptoms, everything's gone, everything's resolved, and he's okay. So I advised him, I said, you know, Dr. Ross, Greg Ross, who's a real experienced chiropractor, of NMT practitioner, um, was there and was close to him and I said, you know, I'd really like you to follow up with Dr. Ross, go see him and, um, you know, we've made a really good dent but, you know, this is something we should, we should have a little bit of work on for a while and um, so uh, I contacted the chiropractor that had referred him that brought him and uh, so I said, well, did he, did he ever go see Dr. Ross? No, he says, uh, he, uh, he thought it was real interesting, but he didn't think that that was anything that he'd really want to do. And any one of those about six or eight exposures that he would have had, he would have sent him to the hospital. He didn't have any. But it was so conceptually weird for him. And like I said, this was not a guy who was real big on acceptance anyway. That, um, that um, you know, he just, even, even with that kind of a response, he just didn't want to. 
Go figure. So, you're still feeling a little tingling, right? A little bit, yeah. And so I'm just going through sensory motor pathway now, because it's not really a neuroimmune thing, I'm just treating to... You know how we went over uh, guide movement with regard to this idea of facilitated pathways, and the more you facilitate them to get to the point that they just kind of run on their own, it doesn't take much to keep them going. So uh, I'm just going through some sensory motor stuff just to dampen that. And how's it tingling right now? It's really minimal. It's barely there. There's like some in my throat, barely, because I just like there's a nice lot of cold. Mm -hmm. But it's I like this is this is completely like unprecedented. Unprecedented. <laughs> Calls for a bite of fish. <laughs> Not for you. But um Let's spend a few more minutes together here, and I just want to chase some... I thought you were supposed to skip these before you go. Um, uh, before, before you go, or we move on. Well, you know, a lot of times, the, the work that we do with regard to immunological issues, it's fairly, it can be a little bit intricate or involved. When Colin was here, you saw we were looking for these specific categories of immune system cells that were self-targeting. We went through immune system response pathway in previous uh, treatments with him, which is very detailed pathway. We look at five different metrics of immune system function relative to a number of different things, different tissues or, or exposures, what have you. And uh, so it was quite a bit that we did for him. But, uh, you know, this is a situation, and they're not rare situations, where you already have all the tools to do this. You, you need competence in applying those tools, have confidence in applying those tools and clarity about the underlying stuff that we spent the whole morning talking about. And that stuff that, I mean, I've spent, I spent so much time reading about that stuff and learning about that and making that a part of me that it's more real than what I used to think was real. And, um, and so that's important. It's not, it's not just a matter of, of just, you know, Reiterating a chant or something like that. This is this is a different thing, but but this is a really good example of how absolutely straightforward and classical the responses can be. We treated one pathway, one pathway. We were very careful about doing the information fault uh, query and, and corrections. We were very careful about sequen sequencing the exposures, smell, sight, smell the rub test, the taste test. But, you know, it's a pretty good response. It's been about 10, 15 minutes now, and I think if you were going to have a type E, I, type IG immediate response, that you'd have had it some time ago. But it didn't happen. Your voice isn't rough or raw or... Uh, so, so there you go. So let's check a couple of things before I continue with my dinner. What you got? Pretty yummy. Except for this part. That's not. I'll leave that out for the cat. You know, I bet if we left it out for the cat, we'll come back tomorrow morning and still be there. Yeah, that's good. There you go.
Is any level of the ACS aware of a primary priority for treatment at this time? Is any level of the ACS aware of information faults related to these exposures, related to fear of these exposures, fear of future exposures, fear of future reactions to these exposures? Is any level of the ACS aware of any uh, uh, any uh, unresolved issue that uh, needs to be addressed at this time? Is any level of the ACS aware of a optimal uh, duration and frequency of power multiple to reapply this therapeutic intention? No? That's it. Now, I'll tell you what I tell everybody that I treat for anaphylaxis is, uh, you know, this was a pretty uneventful evening. <laughs> um, uh, but that doesn't mean that you're safe with these. You need to be followed by somebody who knows what they're doing. And I think Dr. Gallant would be uh, a good one to do that up here. You, you live up here, right? Yeah. And um, to have him work with you, and it, and it may not take more than uh, another session or two spread out over a number of weeks to, to show with you know, clarity and certainty that you're not going to have a response. I mean, it's typically what I see. You know, I, I have people that I treat like this in the seminar, and I get emails you know, like a year or so later. I treated this one woman. She had these terrible, terrible reactions to uh, uh, avocado. In fact, her, her reaction, her last, last reaction was she ate a tomato that was stored in, you know, like people put a you stuff in a vegetable basket and hang it up to ripen. So she ate a tomato that was stored next to an unpeeled avocado, and she had a reaction and just you know, had to run to the hospital. So this is a, people are funny. So I treat her at the seminar, and uh, this this was another one in Las Vegas. So I treat her at the seminar, and she really, previous to the onset of the allergy to the avocado, she really liked avocado. So we have the kitchen staff prepare an avocado for us and bring up, so she, there, here's a sliced avocado. So she's, you know, I asked her to take a bite, you know, she can go through everything like we did with you, but she's not having any reaction at all. So she scarfs down the whole avocado. And, you know, I'm kind of looking like, whoa. And um, so then, uh, I said, you know, I gave her the same story. And then, so the next day, we're at lunch, and I'm walking by her table, and she's got this big bowl of guacamole. She's sitting there by herself, <laughs> like, like, you know, some guacamole addict. And she's eating this guacamole, you know, like like, like a, a, an animal, you know. It's just, it's, nobody better come close to her, you know. Or she's, and... Uh, so at the end of the seminar, I said, "So Cindy, um, how about how about uh, giving me a, a you know a, a quote or something for NMT so I, I can you know talk about you know, what, what great response that you had and try to get more people to come to the seminar, which is always a challenge." And uh, so she says, "Well, she says, let me wait and see. I want to make sure." So, a year goes by, another three or four months goes by, so it's, now it's like 15, 16 months later, and I get an email from her. Well, she says, I've had avocados every day for the last year and a quarter, and I've had no response, and so I'm glad to report that there seems to be some benefit <laughs> to NMT for allergy to avocados. So generous. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, well, okay. I think we're all done. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you so much. That's good. Well, that was kind of fun, huh? And by the way, what you just saw is not actually possible. It's not actually possible. I think you can consult anybody in the, in the world of immunology and they'll, they'll confirm for you that what you just saw actually can't happen. It's an illusion. It's uh, an illusion. But what they don't tell you is so is everything else. So it's okay. Well, thanks. It was a great first day. It's 10 o'clock. You know, you're a bunch of party hoopers for leaving early, but that's all right. We'll see you in the morning.